Mankind's technological development is closely tied to the history of transportation. The ability to carry a heavier cargo farther and faster has allowed the human race to satisfy a common yearning, freedom, freedom to expand horizons. Each advance in technology is met with criticism and skepticism. People have overcome barriers that were once thought too difficult, too dangerous, too expensive. Flight, underwater boats, the sound barrier, and the ability to travel in space, to name a few. Breaking these barriers required visionaries, people who saw the possibilities instead of obstacles. Robert Goddard, the rocket pioneer, was one such visionary. He is best known for proving, in 1926, that a liquid-fueled rocket could fly. But in 1909, Goddard suggested that a linear induction electric motor, similar to the circular induction motor in a house van, could be used to produce a magnetic levitation transportation system in a vacuum pipe that could take you from Boston to New York City in 15 minutes. Now, over 80 years later, the question of such a transportation system is less of how than when. NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama, is spearheading a project called Maglifter. The Maglifter is a catapult that uses superconducting magnetic levitation to achieve a low-cost Earth-to-orbit transportation system. The rocket and payload would be mounted in a magnetically levitated carrier, the accelerator system would be in a tunnel. To reduce the atmospheric resistance, the tunnel might be filled with a gas such as helium. The maglev carrier vehicle would be accelerated to several hundred miles per hour through four miles of tunnel. Maximum launch velocity is achieved as the carrier vehicle and rocket payload reach the end of the tunnel. The release system would provide a managed transition from the environment inside the tunnel and on the carrier to free flight in the external environment. The launch would be from mountain scales typically 10 to 15,000 feet above sea level at velocities of about 600 miles per hour. Most importantly, the state vector of the emerging craft would be pitched up as much as 60 degrees from the horizontal, which would provide a rapid transition into space. The payload would endure acceleration forces not exceeding a benign 3 Gs, or three times the pull of Earth's gravity. If for some reason the launch system misfires, the carrier would not release it, but would safely decelerate it down the remaining two miles of external guideway, where it would be recovered and reconfigured for future launch. The Maglifter would require about $1,000 worth of electricity to accelerate one million pounds to just subsonic speeds. This capability would substantially reduce the size and cost of future launch vehicles. It is important to understand that the technologies to be developed for Maglifter are well within the existing state of the art. These technologies can be developed quickly and will lead to many other advantageous economic and social benefits. For example, the Maglifter will prove the technologies required for a hypervelocity magnetic levitation civilian transport system in a partially evacuated tunnel. The concept creators have named this the New Millennium Transportation System. The New Millennium Transportation System could become a linchpin for a major revolution in transportation, economics, and logistics worldwide. The United States could make a quantum leap beyond existing transportation concepts while maintaining preeminence in aerospace. The economic consequences would be profound. NASA's studies indicate that building the new millennium would rapidly generate 10 million man-years of new jobs while producing a system that would pay for itself many times over in 20 years. New Millennium would consist of a national hypervelocity backbone framework of superconducting maglev guideways. To produce atmospheric resistance, these guideways would be a vacuum tunnel. 
Within a network of 7,000 miles of tunnels, the vehicle could travel at speeds of up to 2,500 miles per hour. Additionally, there would be at least 12,000 miles of surface and subterranean maglev feeder lines on which vehicles could travel at average speeds of 250 miles per hour. The art and science of tunneling has made significant advances in recent years. Depending on composition of soil and depth below the surface, the cost of tunneling will range from $20 million to $50 million per mile. The system's development would begin with the simultaneous construction of the feeder lines and the hypervelocity underground tunnel systems. The feeder lines would begin at key regional sites, proceed partly on the surface and partly in reduced pressure tubes or tunnels, and would eventually connect key cities within the system. The hypervelocity underground system would grow by connecting the key regional system links. The final system would span at least 44 states comprising 90% of the U.S. population. Over 50% of the U.S. population would be within three hours travel time of one another. The underground tunnel system would contain three tubes for hypervelocity transport. Two tubes are required for two-way transportation, the third for acceleration and deceleration in the system, and also for redundancy and maintenance. The acceleration and deceleration experienced by passengers would be no more than in conventional road vehicles, but sustained for six minutes. By not fighting resistance and recovering electric energy during deceleration, the system has remarkable efficiency, requiring 98% less fuel than air travel and producing essentially no pollution. The technologies required for the new Millennium Transportation System cross many fields, aerospace, electrical, and construction industries, together with NASA and other agencies of the government, would all play major roles in its development. It would be crucial that a centralized, integrated system of management oversees a project of the magnitude of the new Millennium Transportation System. Already, there are localized efforts at building maglev rail corridors between certain regions within the country. Without standardization and planning, the same kind of chaos could occur that beleaguered the early U.S. rail system with its incompatible gauges. The Apollo Moon Program is an excellent example of how such a management structure could work. The federal government sets the standards and guidelines with private industry supplying the workforce. In Apollo, 90% of the funding went directly to private industry. New Millennium would not be a government-run rail system, but a private enterprise designed and standardized by the federal government. Once the infrastructure is in place, U.S. industry can produce a new generation of personal transportation. The car of the future would have the capability to be ferried through the maglev tunnels like corpuscles through an artery. Computer control switching will minimize travel time and maximize efficiency. Japan and Germany are already experimenting with high-speed maglev systems in which each country has invested more than a billion dollars. The Swiss have an advanced plan for a national maglev transportation system known as Swiss Metro. The United States has the technological and industrial base necessary to leapfrog the competition from the Japanese and Germans by creating a lower cost, much higher speed transportation system. The results would change forever how Americans work and live, much as the interstate highway system begun in the 1950s has changed the way we live and work today. Now growing gridlock on freeways and at airports requires new and better concepts, like the new Millennium Transportation System. Imagine living in North Carolina and commuting to Washington, D.C. in the time it takes to commute from Northern Virginia to D.C. today. Imagine ordering an item on an inventory network or computer and having it delivered within three hours to the user. The costs of these superconducting magnetic levitation transportation systems are high, but the payoffs will quickly amortize the investments. The Maglifter would cost nearly $2 billion over five years, including development. The interstate highway system, which was completed in 30 years, cost $1 trillion. The new Millennium Transportation System would cost $350 billion over 15 years. 
the new Millennium system would quickly pay for itself with the revenues generated by users of the system and the freight transported. At the same time, it would engender open-ended worldwide growth of the supporting aerospace, electrical, and construction industries. The jobs created, technologies, and spin-offs generated, and infrastructure investments are valid reasons for making such a large investment in future economic growth. The progress of humanity is dependent on visionary leadership. The U.S. transportation highway system was considered by many at the time to be a waste of effort and money. Many people could not envision the need for multi-lane freeways crossing large expanses of the country. Today, the need is not questioned. The NASA Marshall Space Flight Center's work involving superconducting magnetic levitation could pave the way for another revolution in transportation, creating American technologies that can be exported, changing forever the way countries interact with one another.